So, Bernard, you mentioned that you know, the mission of your office is to advance public safety through the implementation of community policing strategies. I'd like to understand the philosophy that defines community policing. Can you tell us what that actually is, and would you elaborate on, like, three components? Certainly. You know, one of the one of the interesting things is my career has, in some ways, paralleled the, the, the development of, of community policing, and it's been interesting to watch it evolve and watch the awareness of it evolve. Community policing... And the cop's office definition, and certainly one that I adopt, is is that it's designed around building relationships, building partnerships. Number one, number two, solving problems, uh, partnerships between the between law enforcement and the community it serves to address specific neighborhood issues, and thirdly, is an organizational transformation within the law enforcement agency. At at some point, and I think this is I think this has been the sticking point. At some point. Community policing has to become cease to be a project or, or a series of special projects, and it has to become the operating philosophy of the organization. Uh, when that transformation occurs, then you can say that community policing has arrived. Uh, one of the challenges um, uh, that the economy has produced uh, in law enforcement, and very often I will have um, – Law enforcement leaders come in and see me and talk about, well, you know, I've had to cut my budget. I have to eliminate my community policing officers. I have to cut my community policing programs. I understand what they're saying, but I also understand it means that that they're still at the stage where community policing is a project. It's not the operating philosophy of the organization. So I think I think those three points, I think it has taken a while to uh, for people to arrive there, uh, for agencies to arrive there. I don't want to bog down in a lot of detail unless you'd like me to, but I, I think that for the most part, most agencies, I think, have run community policing and run sort of traditional reactive policing in tandem. And as long as the economy allowed them to do that, the conflict could be minimized. But when you look at what's what's happened to law enforcement across the country in terms of loss of resources, loss of positions, now they're having to make a choice between how do we integrate that traditional model with the community policing model. And that, that, the verdict is still out on how that's going to uh, shape out. Interesting. So before we delve into specific initiatives, uh, I'd like to get a sense of your key strategic priorities that you, you focused on during your tenure as the head of COPS. What are they? Well, there are uh, several. Uh, one was to, was to institutionalize or depoliticize the office. This office is not a federal jobs program. Uh, this office helps advance public safety. It helps advance the quality of life in neighborhoods you know, across this country. And it should be evaluated in terms of what it does in, in that regard. So it really tried to convey that message. Secondly was to ensure that the office was the voice uh, for law enforcement uh, inside the Beltway, certainly with inside the Justice Department. More than any other single agency, we deal directly with the local law enforcement agencies. Our, our funding grants go directly to them. They don't, they're not in the form of block grants. Our technical assistance projects go directly to those agencies. And not just the director, but the people in this office. We have a number of people with law enforcement backgrounds, a number of people with academic backgrounds who have direct connections. Um, and so this this business of, of being the voice. And thirdly, and lastly, was to bring uh, this concept of evidence-based practice, uh, which, and that's not unique to the cop's office, but this idea about what works and what works best and how do we, how do we make that part of law enforcement thinking. There's sort of a fourth strategic area that was not Certainly wasn't my, on my on my radar when I first came to Washington, but it has quickly become that, and that's helping law enforcement agencies deal with the realities of what the economy is is doing. That's a, it's producing a profound change, uh, and one that I think, um, like I said a minute ago, is not is not clearly defined yet. It's out. 